Geographies Europe as the regional training coordinator and myself and Igor Michael have planned this webinar for you today. So the plan for the session is we're going to hear some stories from different students and staff around IFES Europe, then Michael some top tips and we're going to finish with Q&A. But what we're talking about today is relaunching your student group, relaunching your mission, uh, your national movement. And the reason we're doing this is we feel there is this incredible opportunity at the end of the pandemic as we're coming out of lockdown to stop and pause and listen to God and start afresh. And, and nothing is impossible for our God. Small, difficult situations are not too hard for God. And so we're going to hear some really encouraging stories today. But we'd love to know where you're from. So put in the chat where you're from. Um, and throughout this session, we would love to hear your questions that we'll answer at the end all together. Um, so first of all, um, I'd really like to welcome Cornelia up to the stage with me. And um, she is going to share a bit about um, a story. So Cornelia, just tell us about a situation you've been in where God has been at work, even though it's difficult. Uh, it's been small. Um, let's hear from you. Hello, everyone. So I'm, I'm Cornelia. Sorry, uh, can someone turn off the mic? Because uh, it's a bit annoying. Sorry. Sorry for saying that. OK, thank you. So my name is Cornelia and uh, I'm from Serbia. I'm a, I'm a staff worker at Subatica, but um, my work at the IFES, it didn't start that way. Um, first, I was a student at Novi Sad and uh, I was studying fine art. I finished actually fine art. And uh, while I was studying there, I volunteered to be a part of um, our IFES group there. So I tried to really be involved in it and uh, help as much as I could. So we were organizing mission weeks. And once, um, one guy from Subotica, which is my hometown, came to see our mission week. He came to see what are we doing. He was Christian and he wanted to learn how we are doing that. So he was there and he really liked it. And he had this uh, idea that why that he, he would like to um, to to make a, to organize a huge mission week at Subotica uh, in my hometown. But um, in Subotica at that, that time, there was um, no student work um there were some christian students but they were not like together they were not gathering together it, like nothing was happening so it was very interesting that one guy really just decided that he wants to somehow reach the students um and he was ready to do it on his own if he needed to like he was just ready to make it happen and then when i heard this i really got a flame inside and i was like wow it's my home time like i should do something as well so i i told him that i'm there to help him whatever he needs um yeah and so uh our our uh, general secretary, he, I think he reached out to Michael Lutz. So uh, a team came from England with, with Michael Lutz to help us out and we organized a week at Subatica. And it was very interesting because first we were like inviting all the Christian students from different denominations, churches. And it was just so beautiful how the students were just like, or just young people, they were like um, uniting for one goal. Um, because we really wanted to like reach the people in the streets and it was just so beautiful to actually meet people from other churches because we didn't really have anything going on like gatherings between dominations and churches before so it was just really beautiful to get together and pray about this and organize it and then we had a we had the mission week it was some years ago actually um and then we organized it in a coffee shop every night we had a lecture that uh, michael Lutz was um, leading and then we made some live music we ordered drinks for the people throughout the day we were like on the streets reaching out to people on the streets, inviting them to come. We were around the universities as well. And um, not too many people came together, but at least every night we had, I think around 10 non-Christians at least, who were like there at the event. And it was so nice to just hang out with them and, and make connections with them. And through that week, God really touched my heart and he really kind of put this flame 
um, inside of me that um, it is possible to work in Subotica, uh, even even though if we have to uh, make a way with him because <laughs> not many people are working with students there, but like it is possible to do something. And uh, I really just kept this flame on my heart. And then I went back to Novi Sad. Uh, where I was studying and for many years I was studying there until I finished and when I finished um, I really just felt the Lord was calling me to go back to my hometown and to just start start something there so I went back and um, first first I was an art teacher but um, as a part-time job I started to work with students I started to gather people from different churches and then a year later I quit my job and I became a full staff worker and it's, I really enjoy actually uh, working there with, um, with people. Um, um, should I continue or I don't know how much time do I have? No, it's great. Keep going. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Good, good, good. So right now, um, it's just actually it's just really nice that God started something some years ago and then it kind of stopped. It wasn't continuing, but later on, he really like he didn't forget he just wanted to continue it and then he really just called me and and gave the right people around me to to help me and um i was also asking for for a man who who should maybe help me and then i got married as well in that year <laughs> so this is also a beautiful miracle that he gave me the best uh, help that he could um and then yeah we're working there with students and what i'm doing is that i have two different um groups so i'm working with high school students and with university students um and through the COVID time it was a bit hard to gather sometimes we were gathering um, unlegally <laughs> because it wasn't really allowed to come together and yet we we decided that at least 10 of us we will like gather and uh yeah but but it's really nice that uh, especially the teenage group, they're super interested. Like some of them really like, they're coming together now as a family, really a family atmosphere. Just, um, yeah, it, it just kind of happened. And I'm trying to keep that atmosphere. We're always having food every week. We're, we're together, we're hanging out, we're learning something. Um, but for the university students, I'm trying to organize it more professionally. And I'm always inviting a speaker uh, to, to share. So every week I'm trying to make a different topic um, because the students, they don't always want to come. They, they, they come if they're interested in the subject. So I realized I have to be very creative in this. So sometimes we're doing art lectures, sometimes completely different, um, like I don't know, we're dealing with depression or, and always, always obviously uh, talking about the gospel, like somehow including it, but we're trying to make it very different. So um, every student who's interested in a different uh, topic, he or she could come. So it's interesting that always there are different people coming uh, most of the time, not the same people because it really depends on their interest, but yeah, most of the time we have from 10 until 20 students around who are there. And uh, it's, it's a small group, but um, for now it was very beautiful because we managed to really have quality conversations. There were many non-Christians and then we were able to really just um, build friendships with them and then later on go for a coffee with them and then talk about Christ or, or whatever they wanted to talk about and really just, just love them and, and show them how God is loving them. So I really enjoy what I'm doing right now. And I encourage everyone that uh, even if you feel like you're the only person who could start something, that's okay. That's okay because we have a powerful God and he's able to, to um, work and he's able to show the way and he's able to really bring people around you and, and, and help you uh, make a wonderful team to, to have a team with whom you can like work together and reach out. Yeah, so this is all I wanted to share. <laughs> Thank you, Cornelia, so much. I'm really grateful for you, for your encouragement about who God is and the stories of what he's done in your life. Uh, we're going to carry on hearing some stories now. So continues to encourage you. We have so many stories through the history of IFES where God has worked in small, difficult situations and bold witness of students has meant that other students have come to know Jesus for themselves and had an opportunity to hear about him. 
So we're going to hear from our last person today from Ange Dalton in the UK. And she's going to share a bit about a um, situation that she was in where she saw God again at work in a difficult situation. So Ange, over to you. Great. Hi, everyone. So lovely to, to see you all. Um, the sun has just come out. I'm in Leeds in the UK and the sun has just come out. I'm very jealous of everybody's sunshiny backgrounds, but I feel like I've got to join in now. Um, yeah, so it's interesting just hearing uh, what some people have been saying, I guess, here in the UK. So I work for UCCF as a staff worker in the UK. And in the UK, we do have a lot of big CUs. So we have a lot of um, 80 to 100 plus size CUs. Uh, but we also do have smaller CUs. Um, so I work in Leeds, which is a big city, and it's got five universities in it. Um, and one of the universities that I work with is a specialist music college, um, which is really small. And when I started on staff five years ago, there was two Christians that we knew of at the music college. Um, then they left and then there was no Christians anymore that we knew of. Um, and then I met a, a girl um, called Gina, um, who is just absolutely wonderful. And she had come from a Christian background, but was quite shaky in her faith. Um, wasn't really sure what she thought about being a Christian at university. And I sort of met up with her and we started to chat and read the Bible together and, and talk about things together. And wonderfully, she kind of came into a more solid like position in her faith where she really believed what the Bible said, believed that Jesus was Lord. And together we sort of started praying for the college and praying for God to, to raise up other Christians there and for, um, yeah, for the mission field there. And, and God was just so kind in the way that he answered those prayers. And I guess something I'd love to encourage you with is just keep praying, even when it seems like God isn't working, because there's so much unseen work of the spirit that goes on that we might not see the answer to prayer to. I didn't see the answer for two or three years, but God was at work even in ways I couldn't expect. And so we started praying together for the college and God was really kind. And we met a couple of other Christians. So there was three Christians at this small university in Leeds. And they came to me and they said, and we'd love to, to grow the CU. We'd love to reach out, but we don't really know what to do. Can you help us? plan some events and plan a program that will that will help us to do that and and so we thought about it and we prayed about it and we one of the things that we really wanted to to do was to think okay like what's our sort of not just like not, not just do one event but what's the kind of um the strategy over like a whole term or over a whole year that we can really think about and really grow and so we decided um, at this college, uh, this really small college, we want it to be the most friendly and most welcoming people that new students would meet at the college. So our, our goal really was just to be really welcoming, be really friendly, and um, to tell people about the Christian Union, to tell people that we were there, to tell people that we'd love to talk to them about, about big questions and big things of life. And so we sort of came up with this idea where over Freshers Week, we, we made gift bags, uh, welcome packs for everybody. So we had like tea and coffee and little welcome gifts a little note from the CU and we went and handed those out to every fresher at the college there's only about 200 freshers so it wasn't too difficult to do um, and we went and introduced ourselves and said hi we're from the Christian Union we'd love to welcome you to Leeds um, really great to have you and we're doing this event on Wednesday and we'd really love you to come and the event that we ran on Wednesday was back in that same halls of residence and we did a dial a donut which I, I don't know if people have heard of that but where you text in questions um, about faith, about big things in life, and then you go, you, the CU delivers a donut and you have a chat. And so we intentionally had something else to invite them to. So we weren't just saying, hi, here's a nice welcome gift. We were saying, hi, here's a nice welcome gift. We're the Christian Union. We'd love to chat to you. Here's the next thing that you can kind of get involved with. And so we did that on the Wednesday. Um, and then from there, we also invited people to um, like, just people that we met to go out for coffee and things so sort of follow people up individually and then we invited everyone to our first CU meeting which was called welcome to Elcom and um, the whole thing was around welcome so we did like tea coffee cake made it a really nice welcoming atmosphere and we said to people you know we're gonna be explaining what the Christian Union is we're gonna be enjoying food and drink together we'd love to welcome you we'd love to see you there um, and we were expecting and praying maybe for like five or eight people to come um, so there was three Christians and we were like, if God really answers our prayers, maybe five or eight people will come. And the room that we booked in the university was too small to fit everybody in. So there was 25 people there. Um, and we were like running up and down the corridors trying to find extra chairs. It was chaos, but it was wonderful. 
And we themed the whole thing around welcome. So just welcoming people really well, just lots of time to chat to people, lots of time to get to know people. And then I spoke for 10 minutes on the welcome that God gives to us um, and why that's the best welcome of all and invited people then to consider that welcome for themselves and to consider looking at the Bible together. And I guess something I'd love to encourage you with is think about what you can keep inviting people to. So don't just invite people to one thing, invite people then to the next thing and like follow them up in between. Um, at that first CU meeting, we had like people who'd never met Christians before. We had people who'd grown up in church, but walked away. And we had people who were really keen Christians. So I guess we, we grew the CU both by finding keen Christians, by just making ourselves, like making people aware that we were there on campus. But we also, because we've been inviting people to have faith conversations all the way through Freshers' Week, had people who were new to faith or who were asking their questions. Um, and I guess just to illustrate, to sort of round off everything I'm saying, a story often tells the tells it best. And um, I won't mention names because I, yeah, I realise it's going out. But um, one student we met um, as we were giving out welcome packs um, and saying, you know, welcome to Leeds. Um, let's call him John. He wasn't called John. Um, but he, so we met him, uh, we delivered a welcome pack, had a bit of a chat with him, invited him to, to the Dial of Donut, the question event that we did during Freshers' Week. He texted us during that event and said, oh, I've, I've been thinking about your last visit and I've got some questions about faith I'd love to ask you. Um, are you the right people to ask? We were like, yes, this is brilliant. And then we went to his door and then he didn't answer the door. We were like, oh, this is so sad. Um, so we were like trying to call him, trying to text him. Um, and it turned out that like, he'd gone out for like an induction lecture or something. But we then, someone from the CU then met up with him, like went out for coffee. He came to the first CU meeting. He, he met people from the CU. He heard a bit from the Bible. And one guy in the CU um, opened them Mark's gospel with him. So uncover Mark, they started reading it together. And he had so many questions, like so many questions. His life had been really difficult. Um, he wasn't ready to become a Christian in Freshers' Week. Um, he wasn't ready to become a Christian at Christmas. He wasn't ready to become a Christian even in events week in February. Um, but he just loved the CU community because they'd welcomed him so well and he didn't have any better friends at uni than the CU. And so he kept coming back. He kept reading the Bible with this guy. He went to a local church and eventually at the summer, um, so we've gone from September through to June, July time. Eventually that summer, um, he decided to give his life to Jesus. Um, and it was just really wonderful. Um, but I guess just... Yeah, he he wasn't ready at lots of points in the year, but just the friendship and the welcome and the public courage, I guess, of the CU um, had been really significant for for him. Um, and I guess one thing that I like I've held on to as I've worked with small CUs and I've encouraged my students to hold on to is this wonderful verse in Zechariah where it says, "Do not despise the day of small things." Like the Lord does not despise the day of small things. And I just want to encourage you, like, God doesn't despise the day of small things. And you might hear about CUs in the UK that are 100 strong. They're not all like that. Um, you might hear of people in other countries doing other things. And you might feel really small and you might feel like God's not at work. But that's exactly how I felt with the music college. The CU died. God brought it back to life. Um, and actually, God doesn't despise the day of small things. And it's really wonderful to see the work he's been doing um, in and through that, that college ever since. So I hope that's encouraging. Amazing. Thank you so much, Ange. That was brilliant. So encouraging. Let's not despise the day of small things. So we've heard some three really encouraging stories. If you've come in late or missed it, we'll send you the recording afterwards. We'd love you now to put some questions in the chat, specific questions that you've got about what we're talking about, public mission, public evangelism, relaunching. And Michael is just going to give us some top tips for about 10 minutes or so. And then we're going to finish um, with some good Q&A. So we want your questions. So please start writing them in now. Over to you, Michael. Great. Thanks so much, Nay. Great to have you guys with us. Um, you might be wondering why we've just had those three stories, I guess, because um, maybe you're thinking, well, I want to hear stories about how people rebuilt their student ministry after a pandemic. That's what I need to hear stories about. And of course, the problem is we can't yet tell you those stories because those stories hopefully will be told like in six months time. And actually, none of us in living memory have experience of what it's like to try and rebuild student ministries after a pandemic. So what we've tried to do is just show you three stories of how groups that might have felt small and discouraged have been able to build from a very small start to do something really significant. And I think it's important because the one thing many of us feel across Europe over the last few months 
has been this sense of maybe discouragement. Um, our groups have got smaller, some groups have ceased to exist. Um, we've struggled because we've not been able to meet in person. We've done stuff online, but people have Zoom fatigue and we're thinking, well, what can we do? And hopefully those stories encourage us to think, even if we're starting from very small, there is stuff that we can do. And even if we feel like we're re-beginning a work, um, let's be encouraged in that. And what we want to say really is to say, as we start to think about how we might rebuild our movements, our student groups, our Christian unions, um, to not make evangelism the last thing that we do, but make it the first thing that we do. Sometimes we feel, well, we've got to build a strong core, get lots of Christians on board, and then maybe in a year's time, we'll think about doing a mission or sharing the gospel. But what we want to say is actually, it's much better to think about doing that from the outset. Um, firstly, because people still need to know about Jesus. And I think people are more spiritually open at this moment than perhaps any other moment in the last 30 years, because all of the idols of Western society have been thrown up in the air, haven't they? And been shown to be empty. Uh, we no longer have security. We no longer know where the future is taking us and so on. So we want to tap into that spiritual opportunity that we have. But secondly, if you want to build a dynamic missional community in your university, what better way to begin that than by doing mission together? Um, rather than just tell people we exist to communicate the gospel, actually begin by the way you mean to go on. Show people what you're doing. And if people come and find a group that's active and reaching out and communicating the gospel in relevant and creative and engaging and welcoming ways, that's the kind of group that Christians might want to be involved in, that might want to commit their time to. It's not just another Christian activity, but this is something unique that the local church can't just replicate. This is Christians working together um, for the gospel. So I think Restarting with evangelism, with an emphasis on promoting and proclaiming the gospel publicly is key. Now, what that looks like in each individual context might be quite different. Um, so we're not going to tell you today, you must do this event or you must do that event. You've heard some stories uh, from different countries about types of events and things that could be done. But I think what we would encourage you to say is plan, maybe even in the very first week of term, if you can, if you've got the opportunity to do that. But certainly in the first part of the coming academic year to put on some public evangelistic events. Now sometimes what we do in our minds is we make a dichotomy and we say either we're being social and we're putting on social events or we are putting on evangelistic events that communicate the gospel. And what we end up doing is we either have a very welcoming hospitable meal or we have a lecture. <laughs> and what we want to say is don't feel like it has to be either or. We can create events that are attractive and engaging and welcoming over food with real community. And we, in that context, can also communicate the gospel in a way that fits and a way that feels creative and engaging. So don't make a false dichotomy between things that are social and welcoming and things that communicate the gospel. Events can be both. And particularly at the beginning of a new academic year, People really want that opportunity to be able to connect with others. First year students will want it because they've not been to university, but second year students probably want it too because a lot of second year students going back to university have lost out on a lot of that community that you'd normally have in an academic year. People are desperate for community and hospitality. And the one thing that's really difficult to do on Zoom, as we've discovered, is to offer community and hospitality. Praise God for creative ways that people have done that, but it is much easier, hopefully as things open up beyond COVID, to sit with people, to eat with people, to invite them to an attractive event. And so where do you put those events on? Well, if you can, it's great to be able to do it at the heart of the university campus, but it doesn't have to be there. Lots of countries in Europe don't have that freedom to meet and to proclaim the gospel on campus. And so the best thing then is to get as close to campus or where students live as possible. Find a creative venue, as Katia said, even if it's a gypsy house, um, you can use it for the gospel. Um, as we said, offer hospitality and community. Meals work really well, particularly at the beginning of terms. Think of stuff that's creative and interesting. I think of one student group that put on a Ready Steady Cook event. That's a TV show that we used to have in our country that taught people to cook. And we realized that lots of students coming to university uh, were thinking, I've got to cook for the first time. So this event was not only teaching them to cook, but it also had a talk about an invitation to the great banquets and the ultimate meal that the gospel points us towards. 
And then as we think about communicating the gospel, let's think about how we can do that in an engaging way. What are the questions that people are asking as they turn up at university? And what are the questions that people are asking as they come out, hopefully, of this period of this pandemic? And think about trying to tap into those felt needs and to see it as a bridge for communicating the gospel. And recently I was speaking at one series of events and they had three really good talks. They had, how can I find community in an isolated world? How can I find equality in an unfair world? And how can I find hope in an uncertain world? I thought they were great because they tap into a lot of the felt experiences that people have gone through over these last 12 to 18 months. And then, of course, if you're putting on events, you want to publicise them. And that's a great way to make people aware that there is this Christian student group. So you print your flyers, you go around on the university or close to it, hand them out. But as well as just giving out flyers, you might want to try and engage in conversation. Something that's a great thing to do at the beginning of term is what we used to call a 30 second questionnaire. So you're literally going up to people, asking them if they have 30 seconds to complete a questionnaire. And then you ask them if they would like information about the Christian student group, like to engage in a group where they could discover more about the Christian faith or receive information about a question that they had particularly uh, on their mind. So it's a short questionnaire, but you might tap into not only finding Christians who yet don't yet know you exist, but you might also find seeking non-Christians who want to engage in these big questions of faith. And then as we've heard in all the stories, one of the great things about doing mission is that we can unite together with others. If you're really small, you might think, well, how can we do something in our university or our city? But if you could put on a series of events, the trick is to invite other people to come and join you. That's what they did in Subotica, only one Christian student in the city, but they invited Christian students and staff from another city to come and help them for three days, to hand out flyers, to be there at the events, to cook the food and so on. So it's a great way that we can have partnership in the gospel, particularly if we're small, by inviting other people to come and help us uh, to do something like that. Invite people from other parts of the country, but invite other Christians in the city who maybe have graduated to come and get involved in that kind of initiative. And then, of course, make sure you, as we've heard, helpfully manage, have something to follow up the interest that you've created. And um, don't just put one big event on, but think, what can I invite people to next? Evangelism is part of a process, isn't it? Um, as we heard in that wonderful story of John, who isn't really John, um, it took a whole year for him to come to that point of putting his trust in Jesus. So we want to start by getting people engaged and involved, but then think about the whole year. How can we progress that interest and communicate the gospel continually in different ways so people can continue to get involved? One last thing I'd say before we get to questions, and please do um, be writing in your questions in the chat now. Um, we'll have time. You can ask me. Um, you can ask Ange as well um, uh, if you want to ask her about what she was um, sharing. But one last thing to say is I think one of the things we've got out of the habit of in the last 18 months is planning. Now, it's quite understandable, isn't it? Because basically all of our plans keep getting cancelled. And so we plan to do this and we cancel it. We plan to do that and it can't happen. And here's the danger that we continue to just don't plan. But if we don't plan, we can miss out on wonderful opportunities. So I think although we're tired of cancelling plans, let's look, a hope, look forward in hope to a new day of opportunity for open doors. And let's start to think, OK, what are we going to do in the autumn when students come back? Hopefully, current forecasts would hint that we will have more openness to put on physical events on campus. So let's start planning in line with that forecast and say, what are we going to do? Don't wait for it to happen and then wish that you'd planned earlier. Start to plan now so that we can see really fruitful opportunities for the gospel um, come this autumn. But that's enough for me for now. Um, I hand back to Nay and then we'll have some time for questions. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Michael. So we've heard some great stuff, haven't we? And we want to really encourage you today to be bold and creative in your witness. So we want to hear from you and from your specific questions. So I'm going to invite Ange back up as well. So we're all here. Um, let's go for it with some questions. So and also, if you're watching on Facebook Live, really warm welcome. Send in your questions there and we'll get them in as well. So thanks for your questions so far. Taka 
Um, firstly, Taka says, Michael, could you repeat the three questions of how I can find? Yeah, I think Dorcas has already done it for me, actually. Below. Oh, but Dorcas yeah. amazing. Community, how can we find community in an isolated world, equality in an unfair world, hope in an uncertain world? Basically, what we did, just to give you um, background to that, is we said, what are the big things that students are feeling and thinking about at the moment? And we felt people feel lonely. They've been cut off from each other. Um, uh, they feel a great sense of uncertainty about the future because they don't know what's going to happen. And none of us do. We never did, really, but now we realise that. Um, but also tapping into um, things like the Black Lives Matter protest last year, this real sense for equality, uh, which is a huge thing, not so much related to COVID, but certainly a kind of cultural moment that we're in. And so trying to build bridges from all of those three things, which really do get to the heart of the gospel. So um, what we find is if you have an evangelistic event that just says with a talk, it sounds like a warning for the bit of the event that they're going to find boring. Whereas if you can have a really good title, it's actually part of the hook, part of the attraction to the event. And so think about talk titles that hopefully will make people go, oh, I would like to know the answer to that question rather than, oh, I know what they're going to say because they're Christians. Thanks, Michael. Have you got links to those talks anywhere or are those talks? Um, I do somewhere. I could, if we could send it, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah, send, send it. I can put that in the email afterwards. Great, yeah. there must be some more questions. Thanks, Tom, nice to see you. Um, who's got some questions? What are your thoughts? What are your plans for September, October? What are you thinking? That's never gonna work here. I'm just too tired. We would love to hear them. Um, so pop them in the chat. Michael, and my question is, what, what if your students are just too tired and they can't face this right now? What are your thoughts on we all agree with you, but you know, it's just too much for now. What would you say? And you should go for it. <laughs> First of the Michael. <laughs> Thanks for that, Michael. So kind. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess like the first thing I'd say is like that's that's always like that's often the way that God most uses us is the place where we feel the most weak and whether that's physically tired, mentally tired, like COVID, lockdown, uncertainty it's all been draining um but I guess often you look at in the bible and people that were like just you wouldn't choose them to be your evangelistic front runners and God uses them and um certainly that's the case for the stories that we've heard as well you think you look at it human and you just think God wouldn't use that and so I guess I'm encouraged by the fact that even if we are tired and even if we are weary like the Lord meets us in our weariness and our tiredness that his spirit renews us and often it's when we feel the most weak that, that God really does use us. And I guess like for me, some, one of the things that has helped me most and like spurred me on when I felt at a low ebb and when I felt weak is, is things actually like today, like reminding myself of what God has done, reminding myself of, of how God has worked in the past. And so I think, yeah, if, if you're a two person team, a five person team or a 20 person team, like having time together where you read scripture together, pray together, remind each other of what God has done like we need each other don't we we need each other to to remind us of, of what God is doing and I think yeah all like mission doesn't just doesn't just happen it's, it's fueled by our love for the Lord and our dependency on him and so anytime you can get together with your team helping each other I'm just very aware that I wouldn't make it by myself um, <laughs> we're not lone ranger evangelists like Paul wasn't a lone ranger evangelist he had so many mates going with him and, and doing his thing with him and even if that means getting on a zoom call from someone in a different country or whatever I think we, we need each other to spur each other on and say um, yeah pick up their phone get on zoom ask someone to help you when you feel like we don't need to be embarrassed about feeling weak we're all weak and um, I think we just need to acknowledge that we need each other sometimes to to spare each other on and help us see Jesus again. So that'd be what I would say. It's a bit of a waffly answer. I'm sure, I'm sure Michael probably has something more. <laughs> no, I, I, guess I'd, I guess I'd say three things. One, um, yeah, we are tired and we're not suggesting doing this next week. We're suggesting doing this in the autumn. So get a, get a rest over the summer, chill out, um, enjoy, enjoy a break. Um, but secondly, like plan, like plan for the autumn, because if you wait until everyone's back at university to, to plan, then in a sense, you've waited too long, you know, you could, you could, but it's better to kind of plan now. So I'd say plan now, 
then forget about it in a sense for a month and go on holiday and then come back and implement those plans that you've made now. So that's why we're kind of doing this event now. It might feel kind of weird why we're doing it in July, not in kind of September. Um, but also we're kind of tired partly because Zoom is tiring and I'm, I'm kind of aware of the irony of that given that we're now on Zoom, most of us, unless you're on Facebook, which is also tiring. And, um, but what we're trying to say is like, we're anticipating that hopefully these are not Zoom things. They'll be offline, they'll be in person. Um, and that is so much more engaging. But I have to say, like as an evangelist, I've spoken at a lot of events and I do find online events exhausting. You feel like you're giving out, you're not getting a lot back and, and we're feeling fatigued. But I also know that when I'm in person and I get to see people and I get to chat to them afterwards, that is energizing. And so I think rather than thinking, oh, I need a break. Actually, no, what we need to do is we need to be with each other, doing evangelism in person, talking to people. So plan for that. And I think once you start doing it, the energy will come back. And I don't know, I found you know, when you get those kind of in-person opportunities, like it is kind of energizing in a, in a fresh way. Amazing, thank you. Does anyone have a question that they would rather ask than write down? If so, please unmute yourself. And if not, what we're going to do is just go into breakout rooms and pray for each other. Um, so you've got last chance to ask a question, either writing or unmuting. Great, so I am going to stop our recording.